ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد my dear brothers and sisters in islam we know that these are the last 10 nights of the nights of ramadan and it is in these nights that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us and favored us with a night that is so special that is so magnificent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed an entire surah so that we understand how important this one night is. And no other night, no other month, no other era of the year has been highlighted the way that this one night has been highlighted. For Allah Azza wa Jal revealed an entire surah dedicated to explaining this night. And it is called the surah of Laylatul Qadr or the surah of Qadr in order to demonstrate the magnificence of this night. And Allah Azza wa Jal begins this surah by saying, Inna anzannahu fi Laylatul Qadr that we have revealed it on Laylatul Qadr. And so in this one verse, Allah glorifies Himself, and Allah praises the Qur'an, and Allah highlights Laylatul Qadr, all three of these in simply four or five words. Allah praises Himself by the fact that He has revealed the Qur'an down. And Allah signifies the importance of the Qur'an without even re referencing it by name, we have revealed it. Allah didn't even say we have revealed the Quran. In this verse, He uses what, what, we, what is called the mirror sha'an or the pronoun that signifies something of importance. Allah doesn't even need to mention the Quran because when He says it, then there's only one thing that is in the minds of the Muslims that is associated with this night, that is associated with this month. Allah does not even need to mention that it is the Quran. We have revealed it. And indeed, there is no need to reference the book that is so well known, the book that is always in the minds of the Muslims, that when a pronoun is used, automatically there's only one thing that is associated with that pronoun. We have revealed it, and we've already explained that the term we, when used in the Quran, it can either mean that this is the plurality of royalty, the plurality of respect, and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praising Himself by talking about Himself in the plural. Or it can also mean we, meaning Allah through the command of the angels, because it is the angel Jibreel that brings the Qur'an down. So there could be an actual plurality, and that is the plurality of Allah and the angels. We have revealed it on Laylatul Qadr. And notice Laylatul Qadr, it has the Alif Lam, and the Alif Lam, as we know, is the participle. Allah didn't say, this is a night of power, Laylatul Qadrin. No, He said, this is the night of power, Laylatul Qadr, because there's no competition in the whole year regarding this one night. It is a participle, it is a proper noun. There is no competition. There is only one night that is a candidate for the night of power, Laylatul Qadr. And Laylatul Qadr, the concept of Laylatul Qadr, there are some uh, reports about uh, why Allah blessed this Ummah with Laylatul Qadr, and there are also reports from the Tabi'un and others that this Ummah is the only Ummah that was blessed with Laylatul Qadr, that none of the previous Ummahs, Allah blessed them with Laylatul Qadr. And Imam Malik reports in his Muatta, with a chain that has, is slightly weak, but inshallah put together the concept is authentic. Imam Malik reports that when the Prophet wasallam saw the lengths of the lifetimes of the previous nations, now we know that from the Quran, that some of the previous nations, they lived for hundreds of years. Nuh alayhi salam, Allah tells us that he preached for 950 years. And we know from the other books of the reports and athar, that the earliest generations, Allah blessed them with much longer lives than 
this ummah. So when our Prophet ﷺ saw the length of their lives, he felt uh, that how can my ummah compete with their ummahs? How can my ummah compete with those other ummahs when my ummah is only going to live 60, 70 years? Hadith in Tirmidhi says, أَعْمَارُ أُمَّةِ مَا بَيْنَ سِتِّينَ وَسَبْعِينَ وَقَلِيلٌ مِّنْهُمْ مَا يَتَجَاوَزُ السَّبْعِينَ That the lifespan of my ummah will be between 60 to 70 years and few are those who will live beyond 70. This is an authentic hadith. So the Prophet ﷺ is saying, my ummah is 60 to 70. And then the previous ummah is 1,000, 1,500. How can my ummah compete with those ummahs? And there's also another report in which the Prophet ﷺ mentioned a certain person from the Bani Israel who lived for a thousand months, who lived for a thousand months, which is uh, more than 80 years, not just living, worshipping constantly for that period of time. Not just living, he lived longer. But during that lifespan that he had, this entire 83 years, he spent constantly, every day fasting, every day tahajjud, every day doing something that is absolutely amazing. So when the Sahaba said this, they said, how can we compete with this, Ya Rasulullah? And so both of these reports are mentioned, put together, inshallah, the concept is there, that as a blessing for this ummah, even though our lifespans were shorter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with something he did not bless the previous ummas with. And that is a night that is equivalent to a thousand months. A thousand months of course as we know is 83.3 years. And this is longer than the lifespan of a human being. It is longer than the average lifespan. And it is not just the lifespan, but rather what Allah Azza wa is saying is that this one night will get us the reward of 83 and one third years of worship. And that is more than a lifespan. Because a lifespan, even if we live for 83 years, we take 20 years to become an adult. And uh, we take at least 20 hours a day to take care of the dunya, sleeping, going to work, eating, taking care of our affairs. We literally, even the most righteous amongst us, hardly worships Allah for 2-3 hours a day. And this is, wallahi, much more than what the average person does. So even if we were to say the most righteous person worshipping Allah for 3-4 hours, a day. This does not translate into more than three, four years of actual worship time of a lifetime of 80 years. But Allah is saying, if you worship me on this one night, if you worship me on this Laylatul Qadr, you will get the quality of worship. You will get the quantity of worship as if you had worshiped for 83 and one third year. Inna anzannahu fi Laylatul Qadr. And the meaning of Laylatul Qadr, there are many interpretations. What does the linguistic meaning of Laylatul Qadr mean? The first interpretation is that Laylatul Qadr, Qadr here means ذو شأن عظيم. Qadr means you give respect, you give power, you give majesty. Because the Arabs say that فلان ذو قدر, the per, this, uh, such and such a person, he has Qadr, means he's worthy of respect. He's worthy of Sha'an, he's worthy of Jalal. And so Qadr, the first meaning of Qadr is respect and majesty. And so this is the night of majesty. This is the night of power. This is the night of Izzah. And Allah Azza wa Jal reinforces this notion in Surah Al-Dukhan when he says, Inna anzalnahu that we have revealed the Quran in a Mubarak night, in a blessed night. And of course, what does Mubarak mean? We have said many times before that Mubarak comes from Baraka, and Baraka means ziyadatul khair wa numuul khair. Baraka means an increase in the quality of usefulness, the quality of reward. And this is exactly what happens: that you worship Allah for one night, and you get the quality of eighty-three years. This is the essence of Baraka. Ziyadatul Khair, an increase in the good. So Allah calls Laylatul Qadr Laylatul Mubaraka. So the first meaning of Qadr is a, play, uh, a, a night of majesty, a night of sha'an, a night of great respect, a night of power. This is one meaning of Qadr. Another meaning of Qadr is Qadr means restricted, it means constrained, it means claustrophobic a bit. And Allah mentions this meaning in the Quran, وَمَنْ قُدِرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقُهُ That whoever's rizq has been constrained. And so Qadr here means to be tightly squeezed, to be constrained. And the reason why Laylatul Qadr is called the night of constraint is because the quantity of angels is so much that the world is constrained with their presence. That the world can barely cope with the presence of the angels. And Abu Hurairah said, 
that the quantity of angels on Laylatul Qadr is more than the pebbles on the earth. Imagine the pebbles, the rocks, the sand. The quantity of angels is more than the quantity of pebbles, the quantity of specks of grain on this earth. And so Laylatul Qadr is called Laylatul Qadr because the angels, they are so jam-packed on this earth that there's no space for them. So it is called the night of constriction. And in fact, if this is the case on Laylatul Qadr, outside of Laylatul Qadr as it is, our Prophet told us that there are so many angels that the world already feels constricted. There is a hadith in Imam Ahmad's Musnad that the Prophet said, that the skies are creaking, the, the sound that is made on wood when something heavy is placed on it, creaking. That the skies are creaking and they have every right to creak. Ma min shibrin. There's not a hand span in the heavens right now. This is outside of Laylatul Qadr. There's not a hand span above us except that there is a malak, an angel, qa'imun or raki'un or sajid that is standing in salah or in ruku' or in sajda praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala non stop without any break. So the Prophet is already saying the skies are creaking, but on Laylatul Qadr. All of these angels from the skies, they come down to this earth. So imagine as it is, the skies are already packed with angels. And on Laylatul Qadr, they all come down to this earth. So no doubt this night should be called the night of constriction. There's no space for the angels to be here. This is the second meaning of Laylatul Qadr. The third meaning of Laylatul Qadr. Qadr from what we believe Qadr is the sixth pillar of Iman, which is divine destiny, which is predestination, which is fate. That وَكَانَ أَمْرُ اللَّهِ قَدَرًا مَقْدُورًا And Qadr here means Allah knows and controls the future. So Qadr is destiny. There's also a, a plausible meaning. And by the way, all meanings are valid here. There's not as if one of them is right, the other two are wrong. Laylatul Qadr is the night of majesty. Laylatul Qadr is the night of constriction. There's no space for the angels. And Laylatul Qadr is the night of Qadr. What is the night of Qadr? Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, "Fiha yufraqu kullu amrin hakim." That on this night, every divine command is decided. Fiha yufraqu kullu amrin hakim. Amram min indina. Every command that is from us, it is going to be decided. Now, when Allah says it is going to be decided, it doesn't mean that Allah doesn't know what's going to happen until Laylatul Qadr. Audhu billah. Allah knows the past and the future and the present, and Allah Azza wa Jal, Astaghfirullah, does not change His opinions. Allah Azza wa Jal knows the future. But on Laylatul Qadr, as our Athar of the Sahaba mentioned, uh, as Ibn Abbas and others uh, told us, on Laylatul Qadr, Allah announces the Qadr of the next year to the angels. Allah announces it, and so it is called Laylatul Qadr. That on this night, every single divine destiny, every single decree related to the next year, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala announces it to the angels. Why? Because the angels, they also have their rosters, they have their checklists, the angels have their, their, their groups that are assigned, one group for the mountains, one group for the rain, one group for the lives of the people that, bro that breathe the ruh into the wombs, one group for the deaths, malakul maut. There are angels, each angel has a job, a task, a routine, just like in any company, the, 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 the boss will assign and delegate tasks and Allah Azza wa Jal will assign tasks to the angels for the next year. And so on Laylatul Qadr, announcements come down who is going to die and on what day he is going to die. Who will be given a new child and on what day will the ruh be born into the child? Whose rizq will be increased? Whose rizq will be decreased? Who will face a calamity? Who will be saved from a calamity? All of this will be announced on Laylatul Qadr. And so Laylatul Qadr is called Laylatul Qadr because, because it is the night of destiny and the night where the Qadr is announced. And there are other opinions as well. Some scholars have mentioned seven or eight opinions. We'll just mention one more for what is Laylatul Qadr. And it goes back to the first uh, meaning, but a subset of the first meaning. The first meaning, Laylatul Qadr is a night of, of grandeur, of majesty. Uh, a fourth interpretation, 
Whoever worships Allah on this night becomes Dhu Qadrin and Dhu Sha'an. That whoever worships Allah on this night, he becomes worthy of grandeur and worthy of being uh, uh, given blessings. And so whoever worships Allah, he attains Qadr in the eyes of Allah on Laylatul Qadr. And all of these meanings are valid and correct. And uh, the, the, the concept of Laylatul Qadr, as we said, was a blessing for this Ummah and only for this Ummah in order to have a blessing that no other ummah has had, and that is to give 83.33 years for every year that we are blessed with if we worship Allah on this night. Inna anzanahu fi Laylatul Qadr. Notice as well that in this surah, Allah mentions Laylatul Qadr three times by name. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ خَيْرٌ مِنْ الْفِشَارِ Over and over again, Allah mentions it by name. And He could have mentioned a pronoun that it and it, but He wants to signify how important Laylatul Qadr is. And so three times Laylatul Qadr is mentioned. And in the second verse, the rhetorical question, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ This is a rhetorical device in Arabic that is meant to gain your attention that is meant to emphasize how important something is. And this is common in the Quran. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ It's common in the Quran. Now, the Arabs have two ways of saying the same thing. That how will, how will you know? How will you understand? وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ and وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ Both of these are in linguistically the same. However, whenever Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ He always answers it Himself. Right. Whenever وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ is mentioned, then Allah answers it Himself. And whenever وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ is mentioned, He does not answer it. وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ لَعَلَّ السَّاعَةَ تَكُونُ قَرِيبٌ وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ لَعَلَّهُ يَزَّكَّ so Yudrika, whenever Allah mentions it, He does not answer. But Adiraka, when He mentions it, He answers it. And the meaning here, what will make you understand? How will you ever understand what is Laylatul Qadr? And there is a rhetorical device here that the emphasis is given that Laylatul Qadr is beyond human understanding. It's beyond the blessings of Laylatul Qadr. The magnificence of Laylatul Qadr, it is beyond what we can ever understand. Wala adraka. What will make you understand? It's not possible. You will not be able to understand how blessed this one night is. But Allah Azza wa Jal tells us some things that perhaps our mind can grasp around. And so He mentions some blessings. The first of them, He mentions two main blessings. Laylatul Qadri khayrun min alfi shahr. We are a people who are greedy for time. We are people we want to live forever. We are people that the, the biggest thing that we want is a longer life. In fact, was it not this desire that seduced our own father Adam alayhi salam? Wasn't it just this one desire that to live forever, this is what he wanted? Who amongst us, if we were told, I'll give you 10 more years of your life, 100 more years, what would we give for those 10 years or 100 years? We are greedy for life. And Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed us with so much quality of life, if only we took advantage of it. Laylatul Qadri khayrun min alf shahr. If you want life, then I will give you a night that is better than a thousand months. Alf shahr. It is better, by the way. Allah didn't say it is equivalent. Allah Azza wa Jal is simply making us, because there is no equivalent. Laylatul Qadr is beyond our understanding. وَمَا أَدَرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ But just to help us understand, Allah says, Laylatul Qadri خَيْرٌ مِّنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرِ That this one night, it is better than a thousand months. So important to this is this one night, that when our Prophet ﷺ gave the first khutbah of Ramadan, he mentioned, قَدْ أَتَاكُمْ شَهْرٌ مُبَارَكٌ That a blessed month has come to you. And the next thing that he said, in it is a night that is better than a thousand months. It is as if Ramadan itself is blessed simply because of this one month. In it is a night that is better than a thousand months. The whole month of Ramadan, he is summarizing it by this one sentence. That this, it is as if he's saying, this is why it is blessed. In it is a night that is better than a thousand months. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever has been deprived of this one night, he has been deprived of all good. Whoever has been deprived of this one night, has been deprived of all good. Because when so much is being given for so little, imagine you're getting 
a thousand months for literally it's not even one day it is 10 hours it is from from maghrib to fajr it's not even a day you're getting that much reward for simply 10 hours of ibadah 10 hours of extra worship then surely whoever does not care about this the prophet said faqad hurima al khayra kullu he has been deprived of all good there's no good in the person there, there's nothing that has been willed good for this person if he doesn't even care to get the rewards of laylatul qadr so laylatul qadr khayrun min alf shahr this is one blessing that allah has mentioned so that we understand another blessing tanazzalul malaikatu wal ruhu fiha that on this night tanazzal and tanazzal is a verb that indicates frequent quantity. Tanazzal. Allah could have said nazala. Allah could have said so many other verbs. Tanazzala, tafa'ala means there are batches of angels coming down. It is as if the world cannot keep all the angels. So angels keep on coming up and down and up and down. Throughout the whole night, angels are going up and down, up and down. Tanazzalu al-malaikatu. And so from this verse, it is as if all the angels that Allah has ever created, they come down to this earth on Laylatul Qadr. And that is why it is called the night of constriction. Because the angels of Allah are so numerous. You do the math yourself that our Prophet told us that for every drop of rain, there's an angel assigned. For every one of us, there's a Malakul Maut. For every one of us, there are two angels writing down. For every single pebble, for every single mountain, for every single cloud, for every single aspect, Allah has created created an angel. And this is only the angels related to this world. There are also angels that have no other job than to worship Allah. There are angels that visit the Baytul Ma'mur, which is the Kaaba of the angels. 70,000, the Prophet said, every day they come new since the beginning of time. And they will continue to come 70,000 new angels who have never come until the Ayyom Al-Qiyamah. No two angels come twice to Baytul Ma'mur. You start doing the math and your mind simply boggles away that you get into the billions and the trillions and then you simply lose track of the quantity. And that is why Allah says, وَمَا يَعْلَمُ جُنُودَ رَبِّكَ إِلَّا هُو That no one knows the quantity of his army, meaning the angels, except him. No one can count that. And all of this vast quantity, تَنَزَّلُوا الْمَلَائِكَةَ They all come down. And why should we care if the angels come? Because the presence of the angels is simultaneous with the rahmah of Allah. It is uh, uh, concomitant, it comes down with Allah's mercy. Allah's mercy and the angels, they go hand in hand. Where there is Allah's angels, Allah's rahmah will come. The very presence of angels brings about blessings. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ told us that we don't want to keep things in our house that will drive the angels away. We don't want to keep idols or pictures or something that's going to drive the angels away. We don't want to do and we want the angels to come. That, we, that the Prophet ﷺ told us that whenever somebody sits down and does dhikr, the angels come and surround him. The angels pray for him. Whenever somebody makes a dua for somebody else, an angel will come and say, Ameen to your dua and may you also get what you are praying for your brother for. So the angels love good and the angels say Ameen to our duas. And wherever there are angels, Allah's rahmah comes and therefore it is is a sign of a great night when the world is full of angels. The whole world will be full of angels and not just the angels. That one angel that is so important that he is mentioned separately, separately, that all of these billions and trillions and even beyond, even trillions, wallahi, is nothing. The, the number is beyond what we can imagine. The number is beyond what we can imagine. Allah mentions all of them, Al Malaika. And then he signifies one, وَالْرُوحُ fiha To show the status and the grandeur of this one angel, the spirit, ruh And of course, the reference is to angel Jibreel, that Allah Azza wa Jal calls him, نَزَلَ بِهِ الْرُوحُ amin The ruh that is amin, that is trustworthy. And he is the trustworthy angel that has come to the al-amin of the bashar. الروح amin has come to the al-bashar al-amin. الروح amin the trustworthy spirit, has revealed the Qur'an to the amin of this world. So Allah calls him الروح amin and Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Inna hu laqul Rasul Karim al Zikwa tin inda al Arsh Makin Mutaa'in Thamma Amin." Zikwa, He is an angel that is powerful. He is an angel that has a status in Allah's eyes. And Allah Azza wa Jalla praises Jibril so many times in the Quran. One of the few angels that is mentioned by name so much so that Allah Azza wa Jalla threatens anybody who hates Jibril. He threatens him with his own anger. Man kana adu wal Jibril. 
Whoever is an enemy to Jibreel, Allah mentions. No one can hate this angel and yet love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So important is this angel. And this angel, so much can be said about him. But this angel, subhanallah, it is enough to know that he has communicated with every single prophet that has ever been sent to mankind. He spoke to Adam, he sent down the wahi to Nuh, he spoke with Ibrahim, with Musa, with Isa, with our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he witnessed the beginning of creation. This is indeed someone that Waraqa uh, uh, ibn Nawfal calls the keeper of secrets, an namus How much does he know? Allah only sends him down for the greatest of events, to communicate with prophets. He has no other reason to come down. He sends him down to communicate with prophets. And after the death of our Prophet wasallam, there is no need for him to come down. But every year, there is a night that is so splendid, so magnificent, that this great angel, this greatest guest of honor, descends from the highest heavens. And it is the only time he comes down to visit this earth. So great a night this is. تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالرُّوحُ فِيهَا even Jibreel comes down. And as one of the scholars of the Salaf said, I seek Allah's refuge from sleeping on the night that Jibreel visits us. I seek Allah's refuge from being asleep when Jibreel has come down to visit us. When such a noble guest has come, I seek Allah's refuge that I am found in my bed sleeping. And this is the reality, the one who is eager to worship Allah. He wants to be alive and awake when the angels come down. What do they come down with? They come down with رَبِّهِمْ which means the command of their Lord. For every single matter. And this explains to us why this is Laylatul Qadr, meaning the night of destiny. For every matter, life and death, sustenance, Musibas, afflictions, blessings, everything is decreed. They come down with Allah's command min kulli amr for every single thing that will affect us. And this is why it is called Laylatul Qadr. Then Allah Azza wa Jal finishes the surah by saying, Salamun hi. And in fact, it should, يعني, the, uh, the i'rab or the, the uh, grammatical analysis, the hiya is the mubtada mu'akhar, that it should be hiya salam. But to emphasize what it is, Allah Azza wa Jal says, salamun hi. Peace, that is it. The, it, it you, you would have otherwise said it, hiya salam, that night is peace. But to emphasize what is that night, Allah Azza wa Jal uses a device in Arabic which is basically you switch. You switch the mubtada which is supposed to be first, you switch it to make it second. And the khabar which is supposed to be the, the subject, the description, you make it in the beginning. And so Allah says, peace, that is in that night. Salamun hi. This whole night is a night of salam. Why is it a night of salam? Because the angels bring peace and the angels are messengers of peace and the angels give peace. When they meet the believers, they will greet them with peace. And we as Muslims on this night, we should be worshiping as salam, which is one of the names of Allah in peace. And by worshiping as salam, we will attain peace as well. So this is a night of peace, a night of spiritual spirituality. Salamun hi, hatta matla al fajr. This night will last until the dawn rises, until the Fajr comes up. And the last phrase of the surah, it is as if to signify, it's only a short period of time. It'll only be until Fajr comes. That's all it is. It's a window of opportunity. That's all there is. That the angels come down and they start coming down from after Maghrib and it will only last hatta matla al fajr. It is as if Allah is saying, hearken, pay attention. It's such a short time. Make sure you exert your utmost so that you benefit from this one night. In this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises Laylatul Qadr, signifies its importance. He mentions why it is so blessed. It is an entire surah that Allah Azza wa Jal has revealed for this one night. So the wise person will pay heed, the intelligent person will act. The one who cares about Allah Azza wa Jal and his religion will not allow this opportunity to pass. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us of those who pray on that blessed night. Barakallahu li wa rakum fi Qur'an al-Azim. Wa naf'ani wa iyaakum bima fihi min al-ayati wa dhikr al-hakim. Aqoolu ma tasma'oon. Wa astaghfirullah al-Azim li wa lakum. Wa risa'il muslimin min kulli dhanbin. Fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafoor al-rahim. Brothers, can I request you please go forward because there, we have complete packed masjid, so please try to make your way forward, inshaAllah. <coughs> <coughs> 
الحمد لله الواحد الأحد الفرد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد وبعد There are some of the signs that have been reported for Laylatul Qadr. There are Prophet ﷺ mentioned certain signs that we can try to un- uh, figure out when is Laylatul Qadr. Now, we know from the authentic ahadith that Laylatul Qadr is in one of the last 10 nights of Ramadan. And we also know our Prophet ﷺ said, إِلْتَمِسُوهَا فِي الْعَشْرَ الْأَوَاخِرِ That find Laylatul Qadr in the 10 last nights when 9 days are left, and when 7 days are left, and when 5 days are left, and when 3 days are left, and when 1 day is left i.e. the 21st and the 23rd and the 25th and so on and so forth, the odd nights. And the Sahaba themselves, they differed about what is the greatest candidate for Laylatul Qadr. So for example, Abu Sa'id al-Khudir rahimahullah ta'ala, he used to believe that Laylatul Qadr is the 21st night of Ramadan. And he based this on a hadith that he interpreted. And Abu Huraira would think that Laylatul Qadr is the 23rd night. And it is said that, uh, that some of the Sahaba would think that it is the 25th night. And Ubay ibn Ka'b and Ali ibn Abi Talib and Aisha and the majority of the Sahaba, Ibn Mas'ud would swear by Allah and he would say, Wallahi, and he would not make any uh, caveat or any way to get out. It is the 27th night. And this is because in a hadith in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, if you're going to find Laylatul Qadr, then try to find it on the 27th night. So he specified on the 27th what he did not do for any other night. That it is the only hadith that literally mentions the Prophet ﷺ referencing one night and that is the 27th night and the hadith of uh, the hadith of Ubadah ibn Samit that the Prophet Sallallahu one night in Ramadan he came out to speak to us and two people were arguing in the masjid and their commotion was raised and so perhaps the process had to pause to calm them down whatever happened when they stopped arguing the Prophet Sallallahu said Allah told me when is Laylatul Qadr and I came out to tell you that night but the argument of these two people has caused the memory of that night to be gone. And pause here, this shows us the problems when the Muslims argue amongst themselves. That such a blessed knowledge that was given to the Prophet ﷺ for wisdom known to Allah, he took it away. Why? Because people were fighting. People were arguing is a better word, that they're raising their voices and whatnot. And subhanAllah brothers and sisters, it is a sad fact that to this day, the Muslims are fighting amongst themselves. Even in the month of Ramadan, so many other masajid, so many other places, they fight over the most pettiest of issues should Taraweeh be 8 or 20 should we follow moon sighting or should we go with Saudiya this and that and they argue and they raise their voices inside the masjid and they don't realize brothers and sisters that these differences are utterly trivial whatever you do inshallah there's good in it but fighting is haram and raising your voice in the masjid is haram and differing with one another is haram whether you pray 8 or 20 it's all allowed whether you follow a local or an international Allah is not going to punish somebody for this fiqh position do whatever is good no problem do what Whatever the community says, but to fight, to argue. Look, look at what happened when two Sahaba raised their voices. The memory of Laylatul Qadr was taken up. Moving back to the hadith. So the Prophet said, so Allah took it up and perhaps that is best, he said. Perhaps it is better you don't know. Because wallahi, we know how weak we are. Let us be honest here. If the Prophet had told us Laylatul Qadr, let's say it was on the 23rd, this whole masjid would be empty the whole month, and just on 23rd, we would have to have parking problems in this masjid, right? This is not the spirit of Islam. That, so the Prophet said, لَعَلَّوْ فِي خير. Perhaps there is good in this. There is wisdom. That Allah Azza wa Jal told him when it is Laylatul Qadr, and then he allowed him to forget. There is wisdom in this. And so even the Prophet said, perhaps that is better, that I don't know what it is. And then he said, find it in the last 10 nights and especially in the odd nights. So it, the candidates are 10 and even if you want to be lazier than this, five. Five ni- nights, that is it. And so uh, one, of the, one of the Salaf, Abu Qilaba, he used to say, Laylatul Qadr changes every night to every night. That was his position. And therefore the scholars differed. Uh, the the, the uh, Shafi'i Madhab uh, believes that the 21st Ramadan is the greatest candidate for Laylatul Qadr. And the Hanbali Madhab says the 27th night is the greatest candidate. And the Maliki Madhab says the position of Abu Qilaba that it is varying every year. Every year Allah changes Laylatul Qadr. The point being that Subhanallah, we really are not going to know which position is right, but it's only five nights or even ten nights. That's all it is. Wallahi, brothers and sisters, if somebody were to promise us a million dollars for ten nights of, 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 of exertion, 
10 nights of, of, of anything. Wallahi, brothers and sisters, I would be the first in line and all of you would be behind me. This is the reality. If somebody were to give us a million dollars for 10 days and 10 nights of struggle, what would we do? Do we not understand that 83 and one third is much more than a million? Because millions come and go. But time, life, this is it's only one, it's precious. You cannot have it. And this really is a test for those who are the true believers versus those who are lazy versus those who have no faith. These are the only nights, that is it. And Allah Azza wa Jal swears by it. Wal-Fajri wa layalin ashr. Ibn Abbas said the layalin ashr are the ten nights of Ramadan. Allah is giving a qasm by these ten nights. Wa layalin ashr. Whichever opinion is right, we don't lose anything by sp sp standing in prayer for every one of these nights as much as possible. Allah knows we're in an environment where we don't get any laxity in our jobs where many of us we have to go to work at 7 a.m. Allah knows so I'm not asking you to fall sick and and whatnot however if you have to sacrifice any time of the year now is the time to sacrifice your sleep we can get by with four hours of sleep maybe some of us even less than this we can exert ourselves a little bit extra have a nap in the afternoon where there's a will there's a way some of you I know have taken off from your jobs you have taken your vacation and used it in this time and wallahi brothers and sisters allow me to be frank here to take vacation for the last 10 nights of Ramadan is infinitely better than taking a vacation to go to Bermuda or some place like this think about this to take a vacation for the worship of Allah so that you can concentrate on ibadah. This is infinitely better than to go for sightseeing or something of this nature. So use your vacation days wisely. And if you're not going to use it for these 10 days, what greater cause is it to use it for? Our Prophet gave us some signs of the night of Qadr. He, of the signs, he said, the night will appear bright. There's going to be a little bit of brightness above average. Of course, there will be the angels are here. Of the signs of Laylatul Qadr is that the temperature will neither be extremely cold or extremely hot. It will be a moderate, a beautiful temperature. Of the signs of Laylatul Qadr, some of the scholars have said it will be a, a generally a peaceful night. Now, this doesn't negate it might rain because one of the nights of Laylatul Qadr, it rained in the time of the Prophet ﷺ. But overall, it will be a peaceful night. Of the signs of Laylatul Qadr is that the sun will rise without the bright rays. It's going to rise uh, a pure sun without any rays. This is one of the signs reported in the hadith. And there are other signs that the scholars have said of them. The righteous people, they have a feeling that it is Laylatul Qadr. Of course, these are all symptoms. You don't base your religion on it. Nonetheless, you You find some comfort in these symptoms and signs. And Allah knows best, but it does appear that Laylatul Qadr changes from year to year based upon what the people have reported of these signs occurring on different days uh, every uh, year. Brothers and sisters in Islam, what should we do on Laylatul Qadr, the last point of the khutbah, what should we do? All types of ibadah, just extra. Extra salah, and this is the greatest act of worship, and the most important thing that the Prophet would do on Laylatul Qadr. Extra dua, extra dhikr, extra ibadah, extra charity. Uh, these days in America, we are so blessed, brothers and sisters, we can't even find a poor person to pull our wallet and give our money to. Think about the blessings of Allah in this regard. Any other society, there are beggars everywhere that we can give. This uh, land that we live in, it is a land of milk and honey in so many ways. We don't even find beggars. So you want to donate, go online, find somebody back home that you know, distribute your funds of zakah. This is the time to be generous. All across the world, there are Muslims Muslims, in Burma, in Myanmar, in Syria, all of these countries, they need our help. Now is the time to donate. A masjid, as you know, has been burnt in a neighboring state. It is a time to donate and collect funds for that masjid as well. All of these, we are having our own fundraiser to build our larger masjid. As you can see, it is already jam-packed. So many causes to donate to. This is the time to give it to on these nights of Laylatul Qadr. And the most important dua that we can say on Laylatul Qadr, and with this we conclude, Aisha said, O Messenger of Allah, if I happen to be worshipping on Laylatul Qadr, what should I say? And the Prophet ﷺ told her to say this dua. So let us memorize this dua and let us be frequent in this dua. Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anna. This is the height of what we want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is to have our sins not just forgiven, but forgotten, erased. Because to forgive is one thing, but to erase is much more. And we want Allah to erase our sins as if we never did it. Allahumma innaka afuun. Oh Allah, you are the one who wipes away the sins. 
as if you never did them. تحب العفو You love to wipe these sins away. فعفو عنا So wipe all of our sins away. Brothers and sisters, this is the night our Prophet ﷺ said, whoever stands in prayer on Laylatul Qadr, all of his previous sins will be forgiven. A lifetime of sins will be forgiven. How much are the stakes? How great are the rewards? How easy is the effort to put in? They are layalin mahdudah, just a number of nights, that, all, that is all that it is. Ayyamin ma'dudah just a number of days and nights that we have the wise person who wants to be forgiven by Allah who wants to be blessed with multiple opportunities of 83 years of worship the wise person will take advantage of these nights and pray and, and, and do extra and make dhikr and make dua and we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us of those who catch that night and whose deeds are accepted Allahumma inni da'in fa'aminu Allahumma la tada'lana fi hadhi yawmi dhamman illa ghafarta wa la hamman illa farrajta wa la daynan illa qadayta ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا عسيرا إلا يسرته اللهم اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم وفقنا لقيام ليلة القدر اللهم وفقنا لقيام ليلة القدر اللهم وفقنا لقيام ليلة القدر اللهم اجعلنا فيه من الفائزين اللهم اعتق رقابنا ورقاب آبائنا وأمهاتنا في هذا الشهر يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم من أرادنا أو أراد الإسلام المسلمين بسوء فأشغله بنفسه واجعل تدميره في تدبيره يا قوي يا عزيز عباد الله إن الله تعالى أمركم بأمر بدأ به بنفسه وثنى بملاكة قدسه وثلث بكم أيها المؤمنون من جنه وإنسه فقال عز من قائل عليما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأنعم على عبدك رسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عباد الله إن الله تعالى يأمر بالعد والإحسان ويتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه يزد لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أكبر وأقم الصلاة